Breaking news from Spain, after weeks of uncertainty, speculation, and concern, the Spanish government has finally begun to unveil the first results of its intensive investigation into the massive blackout that brought the Iberian Peninsula to a standstill. If you're curious about critical grid infrastructure and its failures, hit like and subscribe for updates. The story isn't over. Now, back to the mystery at hand. It's the most detailed insight yet into an event that paralyzed two countries, Spain and Portugal, on April 28th, when one of the largest power failures in recent European memory swept across cities, towns, and rural areas alike. Now, with mounting public pressure and international attention, the government is lifting the curtain on what really happened that day and where it all began. On that late April evening, life across the region moved on as usual. The sun dipped below the horizon, lights came on, and the Iberian night stirred into motion. But in the blink of an eye, that rhythm was violently interrupted. Lights went dark. Transport systems stalled. Homes, hospitals, and businesses lost fear. It was chaos, and it spread fast. The scope of the blackout shocked even seasoned energy experts. This wasn't just a glitch or a regional hiccup. It was a systemic failure, one that cascaded across the grid, triggering a wave of disconnections and leaving millions in the dark. And now, for the first time, we know where it started. Do you think it comes from a renewable-based station, old transmission lines, or a substation? Speaking to the Spanish Congress of Deputies, Minister for Ecological Transition, Sarah Augustin revealed the epicenter of the collapse. According to the government's preliminary findings, the initial generation failures were traced to three provinces in southern and western Spain, Granada, Badajoz, and Seville. But the most critical point, the true ground zero of the incident, was a substation in Granada. That substation suffered a failure so severe that it caused the sudden loss of 2.2 gigawatts of electricity, a disruption powerful enough to unbalance the entire system. Within moments, that imbalance spiraled out of control, rippling across the country's electrical infrastructure like falling dominoes. Regions began disconnecting from the grid, and the blackout took on a life of its own. But the real mystery isn't where it began, it's why. Minister Augustin was unequivocal, the cause remains unknown. And although the investigation is ongoing, several early theories have already been ruled out. This wasn't a problem of insufficient network coverage, nor was it due to backup system failures or grid size limitations. The usual suspects didn't fit. What makes this case even more complex is what happened before the blackout. Approximately 30 minutes prior to the incident, two unusual oscillations were detected between the Iberian grid and the rest of continental Europe. These power and frequency swings, subtle but significant, hinted at instability building quietly in the system. This observation aligns with early reports from the European Network of Transmission System Operators for Electricity, or ENTSOE. Their data confirms that two disturbances were indeed recorded across Europe's synchronous area. These weren't just isolated Iberian fluctuations. They were part of a broader regional disturbance. Could the blackout be part of something larger? An early sign of instability in Europe's interconnected power grid? That's now one of the most pressing questions driving the investigation. Behind closed doors, a digital forensic effort is in full swing. Analysts are combing through millions of data points, tracking the flow of electricity, communication between substations, and the precise timing of the cascade. Every second matters. Every anomaly could be a vital clue. Minister Augustin stressed that the government is approaching this with rigor and truth. No assumptions, no premature conclusions, only hard data and careful analysis. She assured the public that the investigation will continue relentlessly because understanding what happened is not just a technical necessity, it's a matter of national security. The blackout lasted only hours, but its implications could last far longer. As the government and European energy officials dig deeper, 
the truth is slowly surfacing. Spain is determined to ensure that this never happens again. But first, it must uncover exactly how it happened in the first place. And that leads us to the many possible scenarios being considered by investigators. Was it a hardware failure, an aging transformer, or protection relay that malfunctioned under pressure? Could it have been a software bug in the automated systems that manage load balancing and frequency control? Was it an external cyber attack probing for weaknesses in Europe's electrical infrastructure? Or perhaps a combination of high demand stress and a minor technical fault that spiraled into a full-scale grid failure? Some experts even suggest that climate-driven anomalies like extreme weather, temperature shifts, or atmospheric disturbances might have played a hidden role in destabilizing the system. Other experts commented that renewables may have played a role because wind and solar accounted for about 70% of electricity generation just before the outage happened. Each of these scenarios is being explored. None are off the table. What we know for sure is that in today's world, power grids are more interconnected and more vulnerable than ever. A glitch in one corner of the continent can send shockwaves across entire nations. What do you think could have caused such a massive, cascading failure across two countries? Was it a simple technical malfunction, like a faulty transformer or relay system? Could a cyber attack be lurking behind the scenes, exposing vulnerabilities we haven't yet imagined? Maybe it was a software glitch. A domino effect triggered by one small miscalculation in an automated system? Or do you think natural forces, climate stress, solar activity, or extreme weather could be quietly destabilizing our power grids? Whatever your theory is, drop it in the comments below. We're genuinely curious to see the different ideas this community can come up with. This isn't just a story about electricity, it's a story about how interconnected, fragile, and complex our modern systems have become. And who knows? Your insight might point to a possibility no one's considered yet. This investigation is far from over. As more data is analyzed and more questions are asked, the full story of the April 28th blackout will eventually come to light. And when it does, we'll be here to break it down for you. If you found this story as fascinating and as important as we did, don't forget to like the video and subscribe to our channel. We'll be covering every development in this unfolding investigation, along with other major stories at the intersection of technology, infrastructure, and the future. Thanks for watching and stay informed.